Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head up to the north of Scotland, to the Speyside region, very famous for its whiskey, in fact, between Inverness in the west and Aberdeen in the east. And this brewery we're going to visit today is called the Speyside Craft Brewery, and this beer is the Findhorn Killer, which is an IPA-style beer. And I always like reviewing beers from this brewery, one, because they are actually very good, and two, because Seb Jones, who owns it, is an alumni of the same chemistry program that I went through so it's always cool to see what your former uh, your, your fellow alumni rather actually get up to these days but anyway um, as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very brief history of the brewery it will only be a minute or two long because you I've done a, quite a few of these reviews before and it is a new company if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward the brewery websites in the description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I've done from space out before and I'm sure when Seb releases some new beers I will do those for you as well but anyway as I told you the brewery is from the Speyside region in the north of Scotland. It's actually from a little town called Forest. And as I say, this region is actually very famous for its whiskey distilleries. And this is due to the purity of the water in the region. A few of the famous ones that those of you watching in various other countries will have heard of. There's Aberlour, Balvenie, Ben Riech, Ben Romach, uh, Cardew, uh, Glen Grant, Glen Morrie, Glen Farclass, Glen Fiddish, Glen Livet, and also McCallan. Those are the more famous ones that you will have heard of, but there are more than that in the region. But Speyside is actually a bit of a kind of food and drink uh, capital of Scotland these days. They're producing a lot of good things, and in addition to the whiskey, there's also some really good breweries up there. Of course, you've got the Windswept Brewery in Lossiemouth, the uh, Cairngorm Brewery in Aviemore. You have these guys as well, and of course, you've got various other breweries around Inverness and Aberdeen too. So the north of Scotland, and particularly Speyside, obviously is very good for your food and drink but the brewery itself the space side craft brewery was founded in 2012 by Seb Jones who is like I say a former chemistry student at Aberdeen University and apparently had been brewing on and off since the age of 13 with his dad and they used to experiment with various different brewing kits and things like this but the experimentation tailed off when Seb entered his senior years at high school and he started playing music quite avidly but it he, he, he was rekindled when he went through the chemistry program at Aberdeen University and he decided that he wanted to get back into his passion and brewing beer. But Seb opted for Moray as the location of his brewery and this is actually, his, I believe this is his hometown actually, but he received funding from the Moray Business Gateway which is a publicly funded organisation that helps lo young local businesses get off the ground and he also received support from Prince's Scottish Youth Trust who gave him a loan to pay for training in the brewing process and he did this down in the north of England in Sunderland at Brew Lab which is actually quite a prominent brewing school these days. But Seb seems to have gone through various hurdles with different organisations to get the brewery off the ground and he said that it was quite hard initially to get funding but he managed to win round quite a few investors by telling them of his vision but one of the key things for Seb was actually getting the premises, the investors and all of these things to come together and get the brewery off the ground but he's very successfully done it and he's won quite a few business awards for what he's done and he's starting to win awards for the beer these days as well which is always a good sign. But anyway what is really cool about this brewery is that they do adopt, the like quite a few of the breweries in Scotland they do like to name the beers after their local things so just to list the other beers you can get from these guys you have Bottlenose Bitter which is named after the, the, the dolphins that you'll see off the Moray coast and they actually donate a portion of the properties to the conservations that, con conservation efforts that go on to save the dolphins up there there's the Moray IPA there's the Bowfiddle Blonde and Bowfiddle Blonde is actually named after a gull colony in the local area as well and they also have Randolph's, Le Randolph's Leap Lager which I believe is a, a kind of rock for that they used to jump over as kids and things. So they do bring a real local um, bit of heritage into their beers. But anyway, that's your brief history of this brewery, so we'll get on to the tasting. So I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one here. So as you can see, you can see the dolphins on this actually, as I, as I was telling you, the bow fiddle blonde, but it's quite nicely done. I always like this, how the, the label looks a bit like a kind of crumpled paper. They've changed them to be this kind of glossy stick thing um, since I last reviewed them. They were more of a kind of um, satin finish that was on them before. But as I told you, these beers are named after local things. So it says on the side here, um, Speyside is not only famous for its whiskey. Anglers come from afar in the hope of hooking a prized salmon from the river Spey 
and Finhorn. This beer is named after the Finhorn Killer, a salmon fly designed by a local forest angler. It has been used for over 20 years with great success. This red IPA reflects the colours of the popular fly. Finhorn Killer IPA has a spicy bitterness and is dry hop with Columbus to give a mango aroma. And it says best served at 12 degrees or chilled according to taste. And it's best before 28th of February 2016. So very nicely presented. The slogan of this brewery is against the grain and it says this means something different and Seb says for me it is the impetus behind my brewery it meant coming home to Speyside after studying chemistry at university and choosing passion over industry creating the finest craft beers I can I sincerely hope you'll enjoy them and he signs the bottle as well there which is quite a nice touch I believe I'll just move the light back so you can see that a wee bit better but it looks very nice so this guy is a 5.6% red IPA so without further ado let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here so as you can see a nice just a bubble coming out the top of that there you can just see it there I was expecting a wee smoky opening but we'll get it out I actually bought this beer in odd bins in Aberdeen who have a good selection of the different Scottish beers up there and you also get some of the good English things particularly from London in that shop too and they're always very friendly so do go and check them out and Seb is a very very nice guy as well so I'm sure if you've got any queries about the brewery and things just go on the website and drop him an email and I'm sure he'll get back to you. I've met him and he actually provided the beers for me um, for the last set of reviews I did from Speyside so a big thank you to him again for that but as you can see this beer has poured a really nice ready copper colour just put the light away the lights being a bit of a pain actually um, but as you can see the beer has poured a really nice kind of ready copper colour in this one. It is transparent. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see right through it. There's a nice, just under a two finger colour of a kind of creamy coloured head on this one, but it looks very nice. There's a good little bit of carbonation visible on this, just going up towards the bottom of the head there, and there's some bigger bubbles sticking to the side of the glass, but a lot of little bubbles going up towards the bottom of that head, but it looks very, very nice. So let's have a look at the aroma on this one and see how we get on. It smells really nice. You've got a nice big fruity character coming out of this one. You can actually smell a little bit of the kind of aromatic character from the hops too. I think that's that's actually quite prominent. But you've got a nice biscuit and toffee malt underlying there and some big bready and sort of pale malt elements coming out too. But on top of that, you've got a really nice orangey and tropical fruit flavour coming out of this one. It's a mix of orangey and grapefruit and I think you can smell a little bit of the mango in there too that Seb was talking about. I think it's quite an orangey and grapefruity one, but you can smell the sort of um, the kind of grassy and aromatic -y hops in this. So I think the aromatic -y hops you can that's what's kind of blanketing the nose a little bit. I think this kind of aromatic -y, uh, this kind of aromatic -y smell, but on top of that you can really pick up the nice sweet oranges and a little bit of that tropical fruit in there too. But it's a nice big biscuity and caramel malt base with a bit of breadiness and kind of you can pick up just a little bit of the kind of pale malt in there as well. But it smells very nice. It's a simple aroma, but it's done very very well. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. This is the Findhorn Killer from the Speyside Craft Brewery in Forest, Speyside, Scotland. Slanja to and thank you to Seb again for the beers before. Cheers. Quite nice actually. Now this one's quite interesting to me because at the same time it actually comes across, it, it's almost like this beer is a hybrid of the English IPA and the American IPA but it's obviously got a bit of redness in it too so I would always think of a red IPA as having a kind of cereally element to it and it definitely has a kind of underlying um, cereal character and that actually mixes with the kind of floral aromatic -y spice that you're getting out of the hops so it's, it's, it's really interesting this it's almost as if it's a hybrid between an English pale ale and an American pale ale actually I should say IPA rather than pale ale it's a different style but it's a mix between the American IPA and the English IPA it's really nicely done actually So you've got a nice, as you'd expect, you've got a nice malty sweetness that just un, that kind of underpins this beer. You've got again kind of the pale malt and the bready character just blankets the tongue, and on top of that, you've just got a little bit of a kind of nutty or woody feel 
than the biscuit and caramel sweetness but on top of that those flavours are all quite mild what I would say is on top of that there is this kind of cereal spice to the beer and it's, it's, it's really quite interesting just how that all blends together just in the middle of the palate just pay attention to that you'll just get this little dry flavour right in the middle of the palate there that kind of builds yeah really kind of quite prominent cereal spicy character in the middle of the palate there around the edges of the tongue you're getting a bit more of the kind of floral and aromatic character of the hops and the fruitiness coming out too but that cereal that kind of cereally spicy character in the middle of the uh, of the the palate is what gives it its characteristic as a red beer I would say the red beers that I always tried were kind of red rye and you can just pick up a little bit of that in the flavor of this and it's beautifully done, it gives you a really nice transition between the floral and aromatic hops and around the edges of the tongue there's perhaps a teeny teeny bit of earthy character in the very back of the palate but around the front, or around the kind of edges of the tongue it's mainly a kind of grassy and aromatic hop and as you get more towards the front of the tongue you're starting to get the orangey flavours and a little bit of tropical fruit in there too I was saying it was smelling like grapefruit but as you go through the flavour and as I think to my fruit juices that I often make up and drink it is quite a mango flavour I think that's coming out of this one but I think it's, it, to me it comes across as more of an orange it's like an orange and mango blended flavour I think that's coming out of it yeah you'll get the fruity character, you'll just feel this little oily bubble come towards the front of your tongue there and that's where you're getting this nice orangey and slightly tropically mango flavour coming out of the beer but as I say, a nice interesting kind of malt base on this one some pale malts, a bit more of a kind of uh, bigger bready character some caramel and biscuity sweetness but the most prominent component I think of the uh, the malt base that lasts into the aftertaste actually is this kind of um, cereally character that comes out. It's a kind of cereal spice and it blends very well with the kind of slightly aromatic hop character you're getting around the edge of the tongue. There's a little bit of earthiness in the back corners, some grassy and aromatic character as you move around the curve of the tongue there and there's some nice oily fruit characters in it too. It's, it's very nicely done and as I say it's almost a bit of a hybrid between an American IPA and an English IPA of the kind of cereal and slightly earthy character you expect from the English one but it does also have the hop characters that you would expect from the American style but yeah it's quite spicy actually you will notice that floral and aromatic spice and some cereal spice in there too so very interesting beer flavour wise in terms of the mouthfeel of this one it's definitely mid bodied the carbonation on it is quite smooth but at the same time it comes in with just a little bit of an attack in the beginning and that helps bring out the cereal spice and kind of give you that measured transition out to the uh, the kind of aromatic and floral flavours but it's got quite an oily mouthfeel this one but there's a nice malty sweetness in there, a nice spicy malt character actually but with some sweetness underlying and a juicy fruit character at the front of the tongue but it's quite, a, it's actually got quite a good bit of dryness around the edges of the palate too from the grassy and aromatic hops so it's a really really nicely done beer and I'd maybe go as far as saying that this is perhaps the best one that Seb's done yet in fact so the other ones I reviewed quite a wee while ago and I particularly liked the, the blonde beer and the, uh, and the Randolph Sleep Lager, those are done really nice Randall Sleep Lager is particularly nice on cask and one thing you'll also get out of these beers is you can taste a little bit of the minerals in the water they have this very kind of smooth minerally water feel to them and that can really affect the flavours of the beer too and it's, it's just an interesting trademark and to think that Scotland has gone from being a big whisky distiller into being a good beer producer as well is really interesting but this is probably the best beer that Seb has done so far and the other ones are good as well so I'm sure whatever you try from Space Eye Craft Brewery you will quite enjoy. I would recommend trying this one if you're into more your hoppy beers but if you want something a bit lighter the blonde and the lager beer are more what you like and if you're more into your kind of English style uh, beers you'd probably like the Moray IPA and the uh, the bottle nose bitter. Those are the sort of more English real ale ones, whereas the lager and blonde and this one are more moving in to the kind of more uh, modern craft beer take, if you like. But they're very good beers. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been cool to revisit the Speyside Craft Brewery. Um, let me know in the comment section your own thoughts below if you do happen to have tried this beer before. Go and check them out. Check out the website and try the beers as well. In the meantime, let me know your own, let me know your own thoughts and please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. And I hope to catch you again soon with my next beer review and I will revisit Speyside soon. Slange it.